Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is June 14th, and this is the site subcommittee of the elementary school building committee. Um, we have, to the extent um, they're available, we've invited the full committee to attend should they want to. So I will keep an eye out. Uh, but seeing we have a quorum, um, I'm gonna call the meeting to order, first making sure people can hear and be heard. Um, Rupert. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Paul. Present. Phoebe. Hello. Hi, Phoebe. Ben. Okay, I see you unmuted, Ben, but I'm not hearing you. And now you're muted. You're unmuted. There, now, now you're visible. But can you hear us? So what what do we do, Paul? Um, hope that. What? Is he, hope that he can reconnect. Rupert, are you in the same room or different rooms? Uh, yeah, I I think he's uh, uh, plugging his uh, headphones now into a different into a different laptop so it might work. Oh, and it says he's connecting to audio. I bet. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. It worked. Okay, so um, in today there's a broad set of issues related to site um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Nisco and what we're gonna be updated on um, is meetings that have happened beyond the subcommittee with the athletic teams and with some staff uh, around the site on the site layout on the playing playing fields, the community fields, but also the playgrounds. Um, and we've had some very productive meetings. And Donna, I believe Bill Brown is here because he's part of the overall layout and has been part of all the playground and layout. Correct. Yes, yes, thank you. And Bill, I, I don't know if you can turn on your camera, but anyway, Bill Brown um, is with Brown Sardina. They are a landscape architect for the project. So they are involved, uh, everything, everything site and including playground and everything. Bill, so can you hear yes, us? I can hear you. Okay, can okay, hear you. okay. Yep. Yeah, thank you. So I, I am turning this over to the Danisco team to run it as, in any fashion that makes sense to you. And we have two more people, both Tammy and Alicia said they could make an afternoon meeting. So I'll keep an eye out for them if they can join us or not. Okay, uh, I am going to share my screen then and uh, since we have had numerous meetings with uh, various constituencies, uh, and it seems like just about every aspect of the site is changing in a little way, we're just going to go through those meetings and the elements of the site um, and give an update and then uh, a preview for the next meeting when we actually have those designs incorporated. Uh, but let me share my screen. Uh, Again, Kathy, I will ask you to allow me to oh, share. Right. It's my other function. Master. Got it. You should be able to now. Okay. Um, so beginning at the beginning of DD, we uh, starting point with the uh, Value engineering changes incorporated from SD. Uh, some of the very first comments were to revise the site in terms of uh, the drop-off loops and the uh, main plaza. So that is being incorporated into the design and that feedback came from the public and the site subcommittee itself. Um, so we are, we did make this area larger. Uh, we are going to incorporate um, bike racks uh, and just an overall design of that area is adjusting to move the vehicles away. Uh, and then we have some continuing meetings that we are setting up with our consultants to you know, make sure all of the changes to the geometry um, 
turning movements, bike and pedestrian circulation is all going to be incorporated in the design updates. So some geometry changes to the plaza and the loops will be shown in the next time we meet with a fully developed site plan. Uh, we also got some feedback on the athletic fields to the north of the school itself. We met with um, Ray Harp and Recreation Commission, the uh, Department of Public Works, uh, people who use the fields in town uh, and got their feedback. Uh, we do have a follow-up meeting uh, scheduled next week with Guilford and DPW in terms of infrastructure that we will be providing. We've got sort of comments on what would be incorporated uh, and what we should include in the base project for a comfort station attached to the fields, um, what we will do to the site in terms of making sure DPW can access the fields in terms of curb cuts and where that would be located. Um, we also got comments on the requirements for storage of people who use the field. So whether it's a container or something like that, uh, there will be an area set aside uh, just so that the people who will be using the field can use it fully to the extent possible within the project. Um, as part of an earlier uh, site subcommittee meeting, uh, and then in meetings with Tammy and the school administration, we are moving in the direction of consolidating the two playgrounds into one play surface area with space around it that can serve the function that this rectangular play area served in the past, as or in past iterations of the design. So there would be one port in place play surface um, larger than any of the existing individual playgrounds, uh, but it would include play structures at either end for different age groups and swings. Uh, we had a fairly detailed meeting with Tammy about uh, what should be included. Uh, and then we also heard reference from multiple parties about um, Jessica's Bounds Playground in Belchertown, which is the photo shown here. So. Uh, like this playground, there will not be fences around the playground or play area north of the hardscape play area. Um, there will be age appropriate play structures um, plus area in the middle or depending on how the layout goes for there to be free play on a soft surface outside of the fall zone and safety areas for the play equipment and swings. Um, and then one other comment that we did here is that swings are very important. There will be a couple of groups, um, including inclusive swings at either end of the playground. So that is going to be incorporated in design. And then next time we meet, we'll have a, a plan to review at least of the area itself, if not the equipment. Yeah, Tim, if I could just jump in, um, just, just for everyone's benefit, we will be going and looking at different playgrounds and around this is, uh, these were concepts and ideas where just want just want to make everyone understand this isn't final right so we're we're this is just the beginning of the playground discru uh, discussion but it was great just to confirm that consolidating and not by pushing the play equipment and the playgrounds further into the site that the fence uh, is not required so from there we'll continue to further this conversation and design Um, we also received comments about the layout and location of the full-size basketball courts and the half-size courts that are part of the hardscape recess area. Um, the half courts will be turned to face each other, so a uh, full court game could happen at recess, not necessarily a fully striped court like the other full-size courts, but uh, the baskets will face each other uh, and then the full size courts will be adjusted a bit further here to be parallel to each other um, as we continue to refine the site. Uh, we had a good meeting with Jen Reese about the outdoor learning program um, and what needs to be accommodated. Uh, there was a good discussion 
about the program for what we currently show on the site plan. Um, the outdoor learning classroom with the shade structure, and then there the other learning opportunities, the cultivation beds, the pollinator garden, and the forest floor garden. Uh, there was some discussion about moving the classroom, the outdoor classroom, if you will, away from the garden beds, because both of those could be in use with different classes at the same time. And then, you know, it could be distracting or uh, a little confusing to have them in close proximity. So we're looking at adjusting the site so that the shade structure is a little bit removed um you know and to make sure that we accommodate for recess if so that's happening so some of these elements will be moving around but we have confirmed uh that we are accommodating the program and then looking forward to when we develop the site plan uh, with all of these comments in mind, uh, as Donna mentioned, we'll be out in Amherst July for a meeting of this meeting and we'll have the new design sort of overlaid on the existing conditions. So you can really get a sense of where the elements are located, how large they are, what the adjacencies are and how it occupies the site as it exists now, how far you will be from the existing building and where these place structures and amenities will be. So that was um, sort of a brief overview of the meetings that we've had, the elements that are changing in the site plan, and we just wanted to really open it up for further comments and what we um, want to incorporate as we move forward and any questions about any of those elements. We're, we're a nice small group, so just chime in or raise your hand. You can do it more formally. Well, while we're waiting, I have I have a question about basketball courts. Um, mm -hmm. And this is, um, I live up in North Amherst and we have a Mill River Recreation Area that has two full-size courts. And what I noticed the other day, Paul, when I was out there, the half court, there's two semicircle half courts. It's attached to one of the full-size courts. So for a continuous surface, and between the two full-size courts, there's maybe a two foot or three foot strip of grass. I'm just wondering whether, whether that's a good design, whether there's something, a downside to it. Because Tim, if you needed to do the outdoor classroom, if one of the courts was nearer, you know, if, if you think of them swiveling around. So I don't, I hadn't noticed that before because I play tennis at Mill River. I don't play basketball. So Paul, I know you know more about basketball than I do. So it's it's a question um, because I just saw a somewhat different configuration. Yeah. I would, I would, I would, um, again, re rely on Ray Harp, our, our recreation director for his informant. The other thing up there, they have um, eight foot baskets instead of 10 foot baskets for the smaller ones. So I, I assume that those half course, are those half course regular size baskets or eight foot baskets? Uh, that has not, go ahead. That, they, could, they could decide that. Yeah. Yes. So ben, ben is raising his hand on this one. Hi, Ben, because I know you are a basketball player. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I was going to say they're they're adjustable over there too. The, the two on the side for shooting, there those are adjustable hoops. Yeah, they go up and that's what I was going to say, Paul. They go up and down. This is just I went over to look at them yeah. just because okay. we're staring at this. That, okay. So get Ray Ray Harp and anyone else who is. Basket. So it it was as I said a question and an observation rather than a suggestion. Um, and I I just I I like so, all the things so, that you've identified. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll, yeah, go on. Go ahead. I'm I, just. I like I like all the things that you've identified, Tim, and I appreciate that you've talked to all the people that should be talked to and heard from and listened to and seems like you've tried the best you could to accommodate that so so i appreciate that and i thought you know the insights on the outdoor learning space with the 
uh, is probably a, is a really wise one because you have conflicting uses there potentially. So good job. I had a question about, um, I know that we've received um, a lot of public comment on the athletic fields and sizing and all of that. And I'm wondering if that has been um, looked at or talked about or anything like that. And then my second question was, um, I thought that we had received a really fantastic sort of comment. And of course, I had it in my mind earlier about who sent it in about the direction uh, of the parking and it affecting the concrete area and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm wondering if that had been looked at or talked about at all, because um, I thought they were at the very least in my sort of lay person perspective, interesting ideas. That was Pam Rooney sent that in. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, responding to the two questions in reverse order. So we did get Pam Rooney's comments and they are very insightful. Um, she suggested angled parking, which and one way drive lanes, which could narrow um, and reduce the total amount of impermeable surface and with that uh, reduce cost somewhat. Uh, but the site and the parking is designed uh, for, let's say, maximum flexibility with angled parking. You can only go one way and park efficiently there. If you narrow the lines, there is no flexibility in terms of getting around someone who is possibly not getting all the way up to the front of the loop and not following drop off procedure. Um, if not strictly at school hours, say there is someone who decides to park at the athletic fields here that would totally block the drive lane. So um, the comments were all thoughtful and, and well received, but um, we are moving forward with the um, most flexible site design possible because uh, we have to acknowledge that not everyone follows the signs. And if, if you design it thinking that everyone will, you may at some point be disappointed. Um, uh, and then the meeting with the users of the athletic fields, uh, they did have some good comments on layout, um, all of the amenities that are going to be attached. Um, essentially, we are providing the largest area possible within the constraints of the site, um, plus the skinned uh, softball infield, which does, you know, limit your flexibility a little bit. Uh, but uh, we also discussed, um, you know, what it would mean to actually expand and, and not just cost and complexity, but there are hard limits in terms of uh, wetland setbacks. And to expand the athletic fields, um, you would be replacing more than 5,000 square foot of wetlands. It might not even be permittable. Um, so uh, there was a good discussion, but uh, uh, the actual Configuration of the fields themselves, the lines, if you will, uh, are up to uh, Ray Harp, the Recreation Department, the users of the fields, and the project itself is just providing the maximum amount of space that it can within the constraints of the building using the school and all of the regulatory setbacks. And, and PB, I just want to, um, you know, should be rest assured that when, we, when we're getting especially the kind of detailed comments, they go directly to the design team. Um, and I usually get an acknowledgement that they have received them. So it's not, you know, in an inbox. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. And I figured that I just when I had um, when I uh, read most recently Pam's comment, I was like, you know, that's a really interesting thought. And so I wanted to I assumed that it had been. Um, at least talked about and all of that kind of stuff. And I wanted to make sure that we, uh, you know, that we were hearing sort of what the response and how that went and all of that kind of stuff. Cause I think I just want to make sure that the loops get closed. Yeah, no, no, I agree. And, and Tim provided some specifics that I forwarded to Pam on, on the logistics of it. So it, oh, it was, it was a full circle loop because I also thought, Oh, never would have thought about that. Um, right. <laughs> So I, so my, I guess my question is on, um, I'll do the cost question. When you 
come and talk to us more on the full meeting, but also when we're walking the site. If we're moving the two playgrounds together to be consolidated and making it somewhat larger for some of that extra space, um, it, uh, my question is going to be, does the total amount of what do we call it? Poured in place? Is that the right word? I call it rubber. <laughs> you know, the 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 soft surface. Um, does that diminish it? Because that big space that says play right now was um, two hundred and forty, two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. I mean, it was a big price tag um, that you had separated out. So just, I don't need an answer for it now, but it would be good to know that because it's part of the. SD design estimates, and if it frees up some money, it may be able to go to the playground equipment budget, the uh, field amenities budget, you know, somewhere else. So it's just, it's a future looking question on, uh, or if the canopy for the uh, outdoor learning space wasn't included, you know, I'm just looking for, it's, it's all related to the site. And if we move from one, can we be reusing the money or saving the money. I'm not saying we have to spend it if we save it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Kathy, instead of um I, I don't think at this point we can really get into, okay, well, we saved 500 square feet, therefore 500, right? Let it let us just rerun it. There's some grading implications. Um I I think overall the place surface, the port in place place surfaces are going to be that big. Um, just combined, so maybe a different shape, but the intent there is, uh, <laughs> Margaret, she's going for a walk outside, <laughs> it's like, sorry. <laughs> um, so, so you know, it, I, yeah. I think it's premature to be saying that, but, um, you know, what we do know from, from uh, the conversations is that it will certainly help um, consolidate the play areas, right? So we're not creating two combining the play equipment, which right now all we have is a budget number. So that too might be changed. So. I, I wasn't asking for specifics, but just to keep, yeah. I know you're keeping that overall because it was also a question of how much fill goes on the athletic bill. You know, just, right. just you know, if, if things kind of even out, that would be not a bad thing, you know, like we've already seen. Yeah, our goal is to have it reduced. But yeah. but I, I think I think Bill would um and Tim would probably kill me if we committed to some kind of number just yet. So so the one other thing I heard um during particularly the discussion with Jen Reese was simpler was better in terms of she sent some pictures um and I can put them in the site pack of seating areas being logs. You know, so you know, fun, immovable, or uh, or either a round one where you sit on top of it, or a big log where you saw off the top and it creates a log bench. Um, and at one point, um, and I, this is Paul. This is also for you. We talked about if we are taking down trees at Hickory Ridge. Dave Zomack had said maybe we can save if they're potentially usable at the site. You know, and so. That's a discussion that the town or some of the public mm -hmm. comments we had. So I just, my, my question here is, when would you need to know that you have <laughs> logs available um, in, in the design, the DD phase? Um, or is that farther enough in the future that we can work on? So it, that, that's the question. And it relates, Maybe to, to, yeah. to, it relates to cost and also design. And are you buying benches and outdoor seating or can they be created? I can well, answer if, the, if, the question with regard to the, to the logs uh, and the, the trees and the benches. Um, I think that there is not a whole lot of cost savings in terms of benches versus reusing logs for seating. Um, because in order for... Um, a log to be used and turned upright. It needs to be cut. It needs to be finished. It needs to be waterproofed, and then it needs to be dug into the ground. So um, I, I think that in general terms, there's not a whole lot of cost savings in that regard. And by taking a log and sort of sawing off the top and then using that as a seating area, again, there's labor involved in doing that. Um, 
and the complexity is such that you you may save some money, but not a whole lot of money uh, in doing that. Uh, with regard to the uh, the logs and the branches and those sorts of things that may be coming off site or on site, I think we need to look at the trees that are coming down and get an estimate of what we think that we can save um, as part of the uh, removal and demolition. And then we should see if we need to supplement what we have on site with what is off site. But that really doesn't need to happen until you know partway through doing the construction drawings. And just we have done some of that work at Kendrick Park. The you know Alan Snow, the tree warden, did take some of the trees there and craft them for some you know um, landscaping materials and things like that. Just to, as a recollection of the trees having been there before. So yes. I think that is something that you do. You can do that actually during construction, even almost. Yeah, so I think the question is, is it prudent for us to just carry a cost for it now um, and, until you have a quantity or commitment, or would you like us to remove it? I, um, it sounded like it's kind of heavy lifting, but you've been there before, and I know you had some volunteers saying this would be a great thing to do. So we would just need your direction whether we just carry uh, the simple seating as uh, Jen was requesting as part of the cost and then we can just kind of keep that in the back of our mind yeah I think I think you should keep the cost there as if we had, had to purchase it and then yeah you know, I'll alert uh, the tree warden to saying think about this you know and he, he's very they're very creative with how they handle things awesome thank you Allison, welcome. I just want to make sure you can hear and be heard. I can. Hello, everybody. Allison, two days to go. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Thank you for <laughs> letting me join at this really strange time, but thank you. I had an opening I could get into here. Great. And, and Allison, just, you know, rather than go back through this, if you want to, we have, well, we have the meeting on Friday, but I'd be glad to talk to you separately or or have Tim run, you know, at a time that works for you, just a quick series of, of pieces that have changed. Maybe the most important one, Tim, you might want to do the playground areas, uh, just so Allison can hear that part, because that was a meeting that, Tim, yeah. You're, you're muted, Tim. Thank you. Uh, the playgrounds, uh, we talked with Tammy and from uh, some input from previous site committee meetings, uh, the open play area and the structured playgrounds will be combined into a single uh, area without fences uh, with uh, the playground in Belchertown as an example of what it could be. Uh, what is not shown here, and this design does not incorporate, is uh, the, the free space outside of the uh, safety area for the equipment and the things. But, uh, you know, that one consolidated area versus the three spread out will, you know, allow more efficient use of the site, um, a more inclusive feel for the playground, um, and uh, address some of the concerns that we've heard uh, for the It also site supports site. supervision. Mm -hmm. um, one of the concerns, yeah. Yeah, that was the major one that we heard uh, when we were able to speak to Tammy. So any other, I know Rupert, you were able to be in a couple of these staff meetings, but any other comments on this? Because um, I I also like it. So Paul said, thought the changes made sense. And um, this is what will be coming out of still as as recommendation recommendations or potential changes to the full committee well i i just like to mention for those people who weren't at previous meetings um uh my concern about uh how we talk about uh uh year-round use of the playgrounds uh because uh, clearing snow uh and ice we can't really use uh de-icers on that surface uh, so I think it's important that we don't have expectations that, that we can't meet. Uh, there will be plenty of times in the winter where 
it's covered with snow or it's just too icy. And, and I think we need to be upfront with that uh, so that we don't disappoint people later. And if we all turn into Miami, then we just won't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just wanna make sure I understand it. Uh, Rupert, are you saying that the playground uh, surface underneath the structures would become icy and they wouldn't be able to be de-iced? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a challenge to clear snow uh, from a rubber surface. Uh, we can't, you know, I don't think we can use plows. Uh, snow blowers might chew it up. Uh, so we're talking about um, a, a lot of uh, work by hand. Uh, and even if you stay on top of things, you get a bad combination over the weekend or whatever, you get ice build up, it rains, it freezes. Uh, and um, it's just important to realize that we, we're, we're not gonna have 180 days, 185 days of, uh, of perfectly cleared playground uh, play areas. And, but we could use um, sand or something, right? I don't think that will work. The sand doesn't actually um, melt the ice. It gives you uh, a little bit of a traction on it until the sun shines on it. And then the ice starts to melt, the sand goes down and the ice reforms on top of the sand. Um, ju just to follow up on this, uh, it is true that there will be snowy, icy days. Um, snow does melt faster uh, on the rubber surface than it does on uh, other, like call it grass cover. Um, and the surface will still be soft when a turf, a uh, natural turf field would be hard. Uh, but that being said, Bill, can you offer a little bit in terms of um, the recommended maintenance or snow removal? Uh, yes, Rupert, Rupert's right. We, you can't really plow it or use snow blowers on it. So what normally happens is, and it's similar on um, synthetic turf fields as well, is that there is some heat buildup uh, with the playground rubber surface and it does tend to melt quicker than some of the other surfaces. Uh, but, but also realize that all around the school, there is asphalt play area and um, we need to have that area cleared for fire truck access as well. So there are a lot of asphalt play areas that will have painting on them and games and you could even clear where the basketball courts are uh, for play as well. But uh, with regard to the areas for the play structures, we really can't put equipment on it in order to remove snow. And can you use a, you can use a broom. You could, you can, to the extent, you know, you can brush it off. I mean, if it's sure. snow, yes. really not ice, but yes. yeah. Yes. So that, Paul, that would also be true of Kendrick Park and Groff right now that we, that, I mean, not not that we had a lot of snow and ice this past winter, but that out the areas that weren't the rubber surface were accessible. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we have- Yeah, so we don't, I don't think we remove snow from our park areas or playground areas. We just let them melt. Yeah, Kathy, and I, obviously um, Mike is not here, but I think him recognizing the complexity of utilizing those areas was why he was uh, advocating for that field that could be have snow removal or whatever. But um, and just it, back back to Rupert's comment, just making sure everyone we're we're managing expectations. So I, I have a question about like, I mean, and maybe this is just continuing conversation that doesn't need to be, but <clears throat> what do we do? Uh, what do we do now when the playground is on grass, like um, some of the Crocker playground and that kind of stuff? Like, how would this be different? How would it be? How is it different on wood fibers? How is it different than grass? How is it? I mean, the reality is if it's super icy out, you know, 
my kids have come home and been like, well, we didn't go out today because it's super icy. So I'm just trying to figure out, is this different on this surface than it would be on another surface? Well, what happens at Wildwood? It, you, Allison would know what happens with the Wildwood on these days. I mean, the swing sets are over wood chips, some, some of the places, right? Yeah. 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 So snow is not anything that we worry about because the children don't slip. But if there's uh, been an ice storm, um, we will shut down the uh, wooden play structure if it's too much ice and um, we can't make it safe. So, um, what will happen is they'll spread the, the icer out um, and hopefully that will work fast enough for the kids to get out. Um, when I was in New Hampshire, they did not use de de-icer, they used just sand or, you know, they spread that out on mm -hmm. the playground to help with the um, slipperiness. And, if, you know, when that got pushed off, then they'd spread some more. Um, so in my mind, mm -hmm. I, I can just see that we need to have some sand available so that we're not shutting the playground down if there's an ice storm. But um, I don't think I'm hearing from Rupert that that would be difficult. Um, it's a temporary solution, but it is something that just gets us through the recess time. Any other uh, committee comments? So I have a request, nothing related to playground and snow and that kind of stuff. Um, Tim, you said that the next time we see this, it'll the changes that that you guys have talked about and met about will be, you know, will show in all of this. Um, and I was wondering if we could add things like, um, and I don't know how far ahead this is going, but if we could add things like lanes, that kind of stuff. Um, I know just visually for me, that's helpful in terms of trying to figure out traffic flow. And, and we seem to be at a point where you guys are doing that or done that. And I'd like to be able to see it. So if you're, if you're making all these changes anyways, if that was a possibility, that would be really fantastic. Um, thank you. We, we can certainly indicate uh, how travel will happen uh, on the drawing. It, it may not be exactly how the parking lot eventually gets striped, but we can certainly uh, do what we can to make it a bit more clear how things are going to operate or intend to be operated. Just, just to add to that, once um, we have our final drawings, now that we know sort of ideas of what we're doing, we do want to run them by PAR, our traffic engineer, to make sure that the radiuses and everything works. So it's preliminary at best. So just, we'll just put not, not for construction. <laughs> could I, so it could, Kathy, can you share uh, Tim's response with to um, Pam Rooney's or we'll put that in the, if you haven't already. Yeah, put it. yeah I, haven't, but, I haven't. Because as I look at this, I, I sort of, it seems to make sense, to, you know, to have two one-way lanes, but because you always have that third lane available. Um, but sure, yeah, I can. I'm sure. Uh, well, can. and just to expand upon what I said to them, so yes, there are two lanes. Um, they're somewhat long, though, um, you know, and it's a long way to go to turn around, which is a minor consideration. Another thing uh, to narrow the overall footprint of the parking lot requires angling the parking, which increases the overall length not a lot but it does and this uh, came just on the heels of expanding the plaza so you'd be pushing back against that another suggestion pam made was to after the drop-off area reduce the width of the drive lane but then that creates a choke point say somebody mm -hmm. forgot a book or a lunch and they yep. stop so so the yep. the comments were all good and in a perfect world um would save money and paving, uh, but they would also limit things that happen from day to day. So, okay, good. Thank you. I will, I just, I, I found it, Paul. I'll, I'll send it out to everyone. Um, so one of, one of the, I think I said this at the very beginning, but I know Allison joined a few minutes after we started. Um, 
the team is planning on coming out to Amherst um, and we'll try to find a date that works for as many people as possible. And Phoebe, if you're on the road, you won't be able to physically be there, but it would on the site side, it would be actually to walk some of the areas so that we get a sense of, you know, this is here and there um, and talk about the layout and on the building side, um, the building as they've changed some of this configuration, there's more space in front for bike racks, for example. Um, and you'll see that on Friday, they added some pictures of bike racks um, on where the bikers could be. So, and, and then the other request is they would actually visit some of the parks that we have um, and Crocker. So they'll see what, what we're seeing and we know um, and, and this Jessica's boundless area in Belchertown. So just, it's a visual in, and it'll be set up. So all of that happens in a day. So if you wanna come into the building one, you'd be able to see the bricks, the materials um, or the site. It would be walking and getting a better sense of what this layout, you know, how much, and as Tim said, the overlay of it compared to what is there now without just the Fort River School being plunked in. So are there any other comments for now? Um, and we're, we'll be posting this set right away in, this, in the multiple folders. And I sent some of the summaries. Um, Jen Rees on the outdoor learning uh, actually responded on the types of plants as well. I mean, we have terrific staff that really is paying attention. So if I don't see any hands, I'm gonna see whether anyone in, um, there's several public attendees. Um, and if anyone there would like to make a comment, now is the time, just raise your hand. Rudy, you are with us. Yeah, hi, Kathy, Rudy Perkins from Emerson. Um, just one thing more about the field layout. Um, that wasn't clear to me until our meeting with uh, soccer and ultimate folks the other day, Tim, um, was that even getting a few extra feet in any direction on the field actually helps in terms of the field wear in front of the soccer nets. Because as uh, Desmond Fitzgibbon was pointing out, by adjusting where exactly they locate nets, they can, the, the hardest wear is right in front of the nets, apparently, during soccer. I don't know that much about soccer, but. Um, so at first I thought, well, if we can't get a whole other field, what's the point of going to any lengths to adjust the design to get, you know, five or 10 extra feet in any direction? And uh, it was after the meeting, particularly as I was thinking about what De uh, uh, Desmond said, that I realized there is an advantage. So if, if there are ways that don't, involve like wetland replacement or significant reshaping of the playground space or anything that, or grading changes. I realize you're factoring all those things in, but if you can get an extra five or 10 feet in one direction or both directions, that may uh, help us prolong the, the usability of the fields in any given maintenance period. So um, I, I thought that was a good point of his that I'm like, and I talked to him a bunch of times and was not aware of that, that aspect of increasing the field size, which I think is worth thinking about. So, thanks. Thank you, Rudy. Um, okay, I'm bringing Tony in now too. Tony, you're with us. Hi, thanks. Uh, the, yeah, these are great changes. Um, I really appreciate how responsive Danisco has been to all the input they've received. Um, just a couple of things. I'll second what Rudy said about getting a few extra feet, if possible, on the athletic fields. Um, it did seem like it's really close to getting three full ultimate fields without overlapping on the skinned infield too much. So if there's any way to tweak that, I think that will be really helpful. Um, regarding the, the basketball hoops, Keith Burgoyne, who's the PE, oh, sorry, uh, Keith Burgoyne, who's the PE teacher at Wildwood, um, shared some input with me, which I forwarded on to you. And he 
asked for 10 foot hoops. He said the lower hoops are a problem with um, kids hanging off them and bending them. So he highly recommended sticking with the 10 foot hoops. Um, I had a question about engineered wood fiber and, and how that would perform in ice and snow compared to poured in place. If you can um, put sand on that more easily, if it can be plowed, if you can use a snow blower on it, how does that perform? Um, and then regarding Pam Rooney's suggestions, I thought there were three lanes in the exit driveway um, currently, and that her proposal was to go down to two north of the uh, cross path. Um, and I just wondered with that exit driveway, how many cars are you planning on parking along the side? How many can queue? It seems like it's a really long distance. And would it be sufficient to have queuing up to that first cross, I don't know what it's called, the, the halfway mark across the parking lot that cut off. Like if you had two exit lanes north of that, you talked about the choke point, Tim, but I wonder if there's enough queuing uh, to go down to two lanes for part of that part, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that's everything I had. Yeah, thanks again for these changes. It, it looks great. So rather than um, asking for any direct responses now, I, I think what we'll do is that's been put into the both take a look at both sets of spaces. There's still a series of other um, still take a look now, uh, another look. So um, one of the things I think we'll, we'll be hearing on Friday um, is we where are there deadlines where we have to make um, certain decisions um, so that right now it's this is still in the works. And I know, um, Paul, there's a meeting next week with staff um, uh, focused on things like comfort station and, you know, stormwater drainage just on there's a follow up meeting. So on because it matters whether the comfort station exists at all, whether it needs water or whether it's compost. Um, and so those are all open questions right now. So so on Friday, Donna and Tim, you know, giving us a sense of we need a decision on certain of these by whatever the date is. And then some of them can be left a little looser because we've got a we've got enough of a budget for it. We already that we can make them later. That would be terrific. Any other closing comments? Um, Rudy, your hand is still up. I didn't know whether you had another oh. comment. Okay. Well, I, I wanna thank everyone for joining. Um, it's been an, an intense set of multiple meetings of which I missed the first, um, but um, someone said to me on the council, isn't this an exciting phase as opposed to the anxiety phase? And it is, um, and some of the building design changes or changes or flourishes. It's, you know, additions are, are looking quite beautiful. So I will see everyone on, or we will see everyone on Friday at 8.30. And this meeting is being recorded. So if some of the people who couldn't make it, I, I will try to just send the recording directly to them. So who said they weren't gonna try to make it. So um, we post them anyway, but we usually don't post the recordings till late afternoon on Friday. So Great, thank, you, thank you. Thank you all. This meeting is adjourned at whatever time it is, 1250. Thank you. Thank you.